All right, we are ready. Here we go. We did it. We did it. One second, it's getting all ready. And almost there. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get start started. But welcome everyone to the Winter Wonderland. We are so excited to have you with us as we are traveling to Australia to hang out with Adam Wallace, author and illustrator and rock star in all the ways literature. So we're excited to have him today. I'm going to pass it over to Melissa from Watermark to kickstart our event. Hi guys. I am so glad that you're all here with us today. Um, super excited to have the amazing Adam Wallace with us who knows just about how to catch everything. <laughs> Thank you. Um, say thank you to our friends at uh, Peterson Elementary for hosting today and we are super excited to get started. Terrific. Amazing. And over to you, Adam. All right. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited. Look, I can see people waving, which is really cool. I'm sure there's lots of people watching that I can't see, but I'm very, very excited to be here, to be able to talk to you all the way from Australia, like 15,000 miles away from you or whatever it is. It's really, really cool. Very excited. So for about the next half an hour, I am going to be talking to you about some books. I'm going to read a story to you and... I'm actually going to do some drawing as well. And I want, to, I want to teach you all how to do some drawing as well. So at some stage, whether it's now in a little bit, I'm going to do a little bit of drawing on my whiteboard behind me, <clears throat> a picture for you to copy. So if you want to grab a pencil and some paper at some stage, maybe we can get ready just before I do the drawing, we can do that. And we're all going to do a little bit of drawing and teach how to draw a really cool little character using a snowman. And I'm going to read how to catch a snowman in a second as well. And I want to talk to you a little bit about when I write stories too. Because when I write stories, all the way down here in Australia, I love writing stories that are in rhyme. I love writing stories that are funny. And I love writing stories with opposites. So, for example, I am very, very clumsy. So I've done a story about a, about a character called Jackson who's very, very clumsy. Here's some clumsy things I've done while dancing. Number one, I was dancing at a wedding. And I actually accidentally danced into an old lady and knocked her to the ground, which was very embarrassing because she lay on the ground going, I can't get up. I'm stuck on the ground. It was terrible. One time when I was dancing, I accidentally hit my finger on the toilet door, the bathroom door, and I broke my finger. One time when I was dancing, I accidentally karate chopped myself in the throat and I couldn't breathe for a little while. One time when I was dancing, I accidentally stepped on a baby while I was dancing. It was very, very bad. And the baby screamed really, really loud. But when we're writing stories, what we want to do is if we've got a clumsy character, we want to put the clumsy character in, we can put him somewhere where lots of other people are clumsy and that would be okay. But if we put a clumsy character working in a shop where there was all this valuable, breakable stuff, that would be much more interesting. Or if we put a really, I want you to start thinking about it. If we put a really loud character in a really quiet place, like a library or a school or a wedding, that would be a lot more interesting. If we put a really, if we put, if we had a dog, we want to put them with lots of cats, somewhere where they're not meant to be. It makes it a lot more interesting. And we can start with true things and change it around. And in this one, I'm going to read you a song now. Well, I'm going to sing you a song. Oh dear. I'm not a very good singer. This could be interesting. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit, You'll see, it's a little bit weird. I can see one class, this water is class. If, who knows the song Silent Night, the Christmas Carol Silent Night? Does anyone know that? The Silent Night, Holy Night. That one, I know that one too. When Jackson sings it in this, it goes a little bit wrong. I'm gonna sing it to you very, very quickly before I read How to Catch a Snowman. So here we go. Starting with a true song and changing it a little bit. This is how it goes in the book. Silent Night. Ghosts are white, did a dance, split my pants. Everyone saw my underwear. Screams and shouts filled the chilly night air. Mum put a patch on my pants. Mum put a patch on my pants. He got the words a little bit wrong and it would have been a little bit scary for everybody watching. He sings another one as well. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, 
Uh, he sings Ding Dong Merrily on High. But he sings like this. I like eating apple pie because it is so tasty with its soggy apple mush and crispy crunchy pastry. So we can start with three things and change them around a little bit, which I love doing in stories. But what I also love is taking things like a snowman because it'd be cool with a snowman. We could put a snowman because at the moment in Australia, the temperature is almost up around 100 degrees. It gets really, really hot down here in Australia in summer because we've got summer for our Christmas, whereas you've got winter for your Christmas. So I could put a snowman in a really hot place like Australia. But in this one, the snowman is in the snow, which is good for him. And it's about these kids trying to catch a snowman. So I'm going to read this to you very, very quickly. And then we might try and do some drawing after that as well. So How to Catch a Snowman, which is written by me, Adam Wallace, and illustrated by Andy Elkerton, who is in, I think he's in Scotland. He's, in, he's on the other side of the world as well. So here we go. I'm going to try and make it so you, I'm going to read it first, then I'll show you the pictures because I don't know this one off by heart. When the moon is full on a snowy night, something magical happens if the time is right. It's not an old silk hat that brings me to life, but the enchanted snow star shining down at midnight. So here's a snowman about to come to life. Okay. I don't thumpity thump or give warm hugs. That's for my friends to do. These clever kids will try to trap me, but who will catch me? You. Here we go. He sort of seems sneaking up up the hill there. And the kids are going, oh, it's a snowman. Okay, next page. Oh, I skipped two. Now, the first trap was a good attempt. Your running made me smile. Your net of scarves might have done the trick, but it's left you in a pile. There he is running off. The poor kids getting trapped in their scarves. I should have worn my scarf. I didn't even think about it. I've actually got, I don't, I don't know if any of you have Christmas trees set up already. I don't have a Christmas tree because I've got a pretty small house. So I've actually had to decorate my chair and turn my chair into a Christmas tree. I should have put the Christmas lights on. That would have looked good today. Okay, next page. I got distracted. Now this trap is an improvement and my escape is no guarantee, but I'll skate fast. And with a spin, you're covered in snow like me. 10 out of 10. Okay, next page. A snowman who loves summer. I've heard of this before. What you didn't know is I can fly, stand back and watch me soar. There he is, soaring off the sky. Wish I could fly. If I could have any superpower, I would like to either be able to fly or be invisible or shoot laser beams out of my eyeballs. <laughs> but if they bounce off the mirror, they would shoot me and that would be bad. Anyway, chasing me down the hillside. You're really good at skiing. But when I bounce into a snowball, I'm really good at fleeing. He's gone huge. Yeah, skiing after him. I love skiing. I haven't been skiing since I was about 10 years old. I used to go skiing every year, but now I haven't skied for ages. I have to go skiing again. I have to admit that trap you made was a clever use of snow, but I can see that it's a trick. It's time for me to go. Oh, it's my fingers right in his face. Hello, snowman. What's that say? Free snowman snacks. <gasps> Getting hungry. A snowman shop, that's quite a treat. Made special just for me. Perhaps I'll grab a hat or scarf or maybe two or three. You can see if you can see all the different hats there. There's a leprechaun hat there. Uh, can't really see the others from back in the mirror. Well, that looks like a bit of an Australian Akubra crocodile hunter hat. That looks like a banana. Oh, that's the snacks. A sombrero, Christmas hat, and a tiara. You built me with a carrot nose. I think that's kind of cute, but cuter still is trying to catch me with vegetables and fruit. Poor kids keep getting trapped all the time and the snowman gets away. The winter wonderland is great, so bright and full of fun, but snow globes can't hold me for long. Too bad, I've got to run. I actually went in a snow globe one time. It was really, really fun. It was a special one. Woohoo! 
Your sleigh ride sure is fun. I love gliding down this slide, but I think I'll skip the trampoline that ends this jolly joy ride. That would be so fun. Imagine going on a sled or toboggan, going off the jump, landing on the trampoline. That would be amazing. I would do a triple somersault. Now that was one fantastic trap and very well thought through. Nice try, well done, magnificent job, but I'll still escape from you. He's gone to pieces. Imagine if your heads could fall off and your body could come apart from your legs. That would be amazing. Once I've escaped your final trap, you get called in for dinner. And as the sun sets, it seems to me that I am the contest winner. So they're all going inside. And there was a snowman building contest. I forgot to show that at the start. Let's go back. So if we go back to the very, very start, it's got here. Do you want to build a snowman? You might have heard that in a movie at some stage as well. Okay, last page. You tried so hard to catch me. I'm glad I'm free, it's true. But perhaps before I'm on my way, I can leave a gift for you. And he's starting to build some stuff. And on the next page, congratulations, snowman winner. I also haven't built a snowman. The last time I built a snowman was five years ago. I need to build a snowman. We need some snow in Australia. The end. So that is how to catch a snowman. I also have here how to catch a Yeti, the abominable snowman. But I'm not going to read that today. But what I do want to do is I would love to do some drawing with you. I'm going to tell a story as I draw. I'm actually going to tell a story about a snowman. And when I draw the snowman, it's going to turn into something else. It's going to start as a snowman, but turn into something else. So if you want to grab, if you're able to grab a piece of paper and maybe a pencil or something to draw with as well. You can just watch along, but if you want to draw it and learn how to draw this picture as well, that would be really cool. I'm going to get my whiteboard up nice and close to the screen. I'm going to get my texter, which I hope works the whole way through because they keep running out on me. And I'm going to draw a snowman that then turns into something else, a type of bird, actually, a snowman that becomes a bird. In fact, I'm just going to tell you, it's a snowman that becomes a penguin. So it's how to draw a snowman penguin. Here we go. It's in a bit of rhyme again. I'm going to tell the rhyme. I'm going to draw the step up here. And if you've got some paper and pencil, you can draw it as well. You can copy along. So here we go. Now, if the snow melts, your snowman will be dead. So use a snowball to give him a head. Now I'm going to draw two little snowmen. So I'm going to do one over here and one over here. So I'm going to draw first snowball head and the second snowball head. One's a bit skinnier. So you can see I've done almost the whole circle, but not quite. Now the next step in our snowman, he needs a body or she, whatever. Our snow person, I should say. Another snowball they've put on some weight. Your snowman looks like a peanut, or actually an eight. So that's going to look like a peanut or the number eight by just drawing. Actually, I can see one class. Put your hand up in that in Miss Waterbury's class if you think the snowman should be skinny. Now put your hand up if you think the snowman should be big and round and fat. Oh. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to do big and round and fat. Here we go. Let's give him a big tummy. We'll do this one, a big dummy. A little bit weird at the moment. Now our snowman is happy, at least for a while. So now let's give him a nice big smile. So I'm gonna do a smile on this one. On our little snowman. This one I'm gonna give a really big smile to. Arr. That looks very weird. Looks like you got a droopy nose. Now that's not nearly enough. We need a bigger smile. And then we'll go do something else for a while. So I'm going to make the smile even bigger. I'm doing a little smile underneath. This one, I'm going to do make the smile big by putting his little tongue in there. And then I'm going to make his mouth really open. He's like, ah! I'm going to color this in. I'll try and do it quickly. Coloring it on a whiteboard isn't, isn't very easy. It always comes out looking a little bit odd. 
but I'll do my, I'll do my best. Okay. He's a very big mouth. He's either singing or laughing. I'm not sure. Now, is there a snowman wearing a shirt, a jacket, or a vest? It doesn't matter. To keep it closed, a button would be best. So I'm going to draw. Actually, I'm going to draw a few buttons. I'll do this one. I'll just do one button. This one's going to have a few buttons. Going down his shirt. I'm bored. Ooh, I'm bored now. Our snowman is done. Make his mouth a beak for some penguiny fun. So now I'm going to turn. What well, was the snowman's mouth? Should have given him some eyes as well. We we'll turn the snowman's mouth into a penguin's beak. By doing this, a little beak there, and then this one I'm going to do the beak by going all the way around like that. So it looks a bit more like a beak. So now snowman's becoming a penguin. Now to divide up the penguin, give it a vest by drawing a line across its chest. So I'm going to draw a line just up because penguins have a white tummy. Oh, I should have also, hang on one second. I've also, oh, as well as snowman, I've got this other book about penguins which is called 24 Absolutely Totally True Facts About Penguins. And one of the facts in here is that penguins, you see this picture here, penguins have a white tummy, a white tummy, so that when they're swimming in the water, if something's underneath and it wants to eat them, it's looking up, everything looks really white because of the sun and the snow. So the penguin's tummy is white, so it's hidden. But if something's flying above the water, looking down to catch something to eat, the water looks really dark, so a penguin's back is black, so it keeps it camouflaged from, the, from above as well. There's also other facts, like penguins can't drive Formula One race cars. That's true. And penguins also can't be, I'm going to show you my favourite picture, penguins can't be a three-time world wrestling champion. Hmm. It's also true. Okay, let's keep drawing. Now, eyes will make your penguin look beautiful. Let's try big ones. Oh, isn't he cute? So I'm gonna use this penguin, rub these out. Some nice big eyes. Make them nice and cute. Oh, I'm thinking I have to go to another texter. Okay, he's got nice big eyes. I'm gonna get my next other black texter. This one, I'm gonna do with these eyes closed. And I'm gonna, I could either make him laughing or a bit sleepy. I'm gonna do him a bit sleepy. Like he's singing with his eyes closed. Oh. Now penguins slide on their tummies for super speed, but at waddling time, feet are what they need. So we need some feet on our penguin. I could do some nice big toes here. Little feet like this. Or this one, because I think he's going to be singing opera. I'm going to give him some nice shiny black shoes. Oops, that's a big foot. He's got one big foot, one little foot. Now draw wings up. Down, whatever, I don't care. Penguins can't fly, so why are wings even there? So I'm gonna do some wings on my penguin. This one, he's gonna, this one's gonna have his wings up in the air because he's like, oh, singing. They're half black and half white. He's singing. This one's, maybe he can have his hands on his hips. Oops. Now black is worn when burglars still loot, but it makes a penguin look like it's wearing a suit. Okay, I'll try and do this quick. I've got to color in my penguin so he's part black, part white. Here we go. Wings first. I'll do it rough. 
If I paint the top, if I draw the top black, it looks like his wings are pointing down a little bit. I'll do this very quickly and very rough. Ruff, ruff. Okay, here we go. Oh. He's looking a bit weird. Wish I could color him properly. I should do another color. There we go. That's not too bad. This one, I'll do blue. It can be a blue penguin. Penguin, penguin, penguin. Oh, my arm's getting tired. Ah. Come on, you can do it, man. You can do it. Oh, finally. Blue wings. There you go. A blue penguin. Okay, a couple of steps to go. A bow tie for the suit, some hair up on top, and now your penguin's done, so stop. So if, what I like doing is give my penguin a little bow tie. I haven't got much room on this one. Little bow tie on there. I might, I'm going to set this up higher. You could do, I could do some hair on top. Could even have a mohawk. This one is wearing a top hat because he's so fancy and posh. He's singing, and then I'm gonna add some more things. I'm gonna add some musical notes because he's singing so loud. I'm also gonna add, I'll go down here. I'm gonna add some ice because he's standing on a big block of ice. Maybe I think we could add some water because the ice is floating in water. Maybe we could add the sun in the sky and all sorts of scenery. So you can all sorts of different things to our picture. So that is our, and this is the one that is from the book. He's waving. These are some other ones. We've got an evil vampire penguin. We've got a cute little baby penguin. This guy's laughing. This one's going, hey, stop, man. Or he's dancing. Maybe he's doing like a bit of a sprinkler dance. Okay, I'm gonna move my penguins back. Oh, oh, oh. Grab my seat. Whew. And then I think that's just about us out almost out of time. But what I was gonna say, um, Melissa or Diane, if we want to, if, if any of the kids have questions, I wonder if we could do them through chat or something, if that's even a possibility. Well, in this one, because we've got a couple of things rolling, I can read them aloud to you, but I'll ask Miss Waterbury if someone has a question in that room first. Yeah. Could be about anything, about writing or drawing or Genevieve, me. Oh, can you hear me? Genevieve wanted to know what you're working on right now. Oh, good question, Genevieve. I'm actually working on a few things. I'm working on a new series of books about elves. And there's all different elves. Um, there's actor elf. They're all by the alphabet. There's actor elf. There is big butt elf. There is cranky elf. There is delicious elf. He's very tasty. There is Electric Elf, Fancy Foot Skills Elf, Gourmet Elf, Halloween Elf, Inventor Elf, Jockey Elf, Karate Elf, Lazy Elf, Magician Elf, and all lots of other ones as well. I'm working on that. And I'm also working, I actually just wrote a movie about babies. And these babies are in, in the playground, but they're kind of like gangster babies. And they've got tattoos and they drive these really cool cars and they do baby rap battles. So they do lots of different things like that. So I'm working on that. And is there anything else? Oh, I'm working on a story called Why Won't You Get Ready? Which is about kids who won't get ready, which I'm sure isn't any of you. I'm sure you all get ready very quickly. A question from the chat coming in is, we want to know, do you have lots of characters sitting around your home that you're thinking, there's a character who might be inspired by a cereal box or another one that might be inspired by a car you drive? Oh, that's a great question. I get characters inspired by lots of things. So sometimes it's by me, like my clumsiness and things I do. Sometimes it's by people I see or things people say. Um, but yeah, definitely, actually, I'm gonna take it for a little tour in my house. Come with me through my house. 
Here we go. Oh, there's a painting of Bruce Lee. Let's go into my spare room. I actually have, see if you can see them. I have lots of characters on my shelf here as well. So little Gumby, this little elephant thing used to be my grandmother's. So that little elephant toy is probably about 80 years old. There's some different characters there. There's a little ninja, Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph from the Simpsons. And that was my dog. So yeah, I have lots of, lots of little characters around my house. And, but yeah, lots of inspiration for characters comes everywhere. Often it's from things that people say or do or that I see, gives me, but great question. Really good. Sometimes I've even heard a song and a song has inspired me to do a character as well. That's a great question. All right, Miss Waterbury, your turn. Do you write every day? I write every single day and I draw every single day. And do you know when I start, because when I left school, I actually was an engineer. I became an engineer and I did lots of engineering on car crashes and did all that. And I didn't write at all. And then I started writing 20 years ago. And do you know, I've written every single day for the last 20 years. I've written over two and a half thousand stories in that time. So I've written a lot of stories and I love, if I have a day where I haven't written by about lunchtime, I have to go and write something because I get a little bit, <gasps> I've got to write something. I get frustrated. You write about all different genres, but so many of these have a great comedy connection. Do students want to know, do you like to write about mysteries and maybe some more creepy stories, but what are some of your favorite genres? Ooh, that's a good, I do love writing funny things. And, and in, even if I'm doing some more serious ones, I like to put funny things in, but I do, yeah. I actually have just written, Adam Wallace presents horrific tales of horrifying horror. So I, I, I actually like watching horror stories um, and horror movies and things. So I've written, they're actually funny, not really scary, horror stories. And I've written some, uh, if I can find it here. Is it even in here? I don't even know. Yes, I've written one with alien stories as well. Um, but usually, usually they're kind of funny as well. I have written a serious one called Spark, which is about a bushfire. Um, which was my probably my only real serious one. Oh, and one called Invisible Jerry, which was about a boy who felt invisible. He didn't think anybody saw him, but they're the only two serious ones. Even now, everything else I like to try and make at least a bit funny. I've never written a mystery. That would be cool. I think I should write a mystery. I would also like to write a ghost story. I've never written a ghost story. That's, that's going to be my next thing. Mystery or ghost story is what I'm going to do next. All right, Miss Waterbury. What is your favorite book that you've written? Oh, Miss Waterbury, that's a hard question. <laughs> it's like trying to choose a parent, trying to choose their favorite child. And I know I'm my mom's favorite, but that's hard. Okay, my favorite book I've ever written is either, there's a book I wrote called The Incredible Journey of Pete McGee, which was about this boy with only one arm. He only had his left arm and he wanted to be a knight and he had to go on a quest to save his mother. That is either that one or I wrote this one here called Jamie Brown is Not Rich, which is the oh, first book I ever drew pictures for and illustrated. And you can see the cover changes as well, which I really like. Um, that's about a really poor, it's that opposite thing again. So it's about a really, really poor family and they inherit all this massive amounts of money and go and live in a really rich, snobby suburb. And so that was really fun. They're probably my two favorites, but also <laughs> I wrote this one called There's a Bull Ant in the Bedroom which is probably my favorite rhyming story um, that I've done, I think. It's about this kid, there's a bull, which actually happened because there was, a, I don't know if you know what a bull ant is actually, I don't know if, they're bull ant, if you call them bull ants in America, but they're these, they're these ants that are about that big and they bite you and it really, really hurts. And so it starts with, there's a bull ant in the bedroom and it bit me on the bum. I screamed and flicked it out of there and then it bit my mum. It crawled across the floor before it bit dad in the head. So I calmly picked it up and put it, in my sister's bed. And I would never do that to my sister really. Because then he goes and gets a camel and he puts a camel in his sister's bed. And then he gets a lion and he puts a lion in his sister's bed. And then he gets a tiger and puts that in his sister's bed. And then there's a gorilla in the garden and he puts that in his sister's bed. And then there's a llama in the lounge room. And he puts, so he puts all these animals in his sister's bed. They're probably my three favorites, I think. And another one I wrote called Cowboy and B I like all my books. That's a really hard question. <laughs> <laughs> all 
Okay, uh, one more from the chat and then one more from Mrs. Waterbury. But from the chat, the question is, when you are doing your writing, do you sketch your ideas up on the whiteboards or do you have notes? Do you keep like post-its and things? Ooh. Yeah. I actually, okay, so there's a couple of different things I want to talk about here. One is that usually when I write, I get an idea of a character, I get an idea of where I want to put them, and I get an idea of the end of the story, and then I just write it. So I don't really take a lot of notes. However, when I write stories with my friend James, who illustrates, who did the pictures for this one, and Clumsy Christmas, and Cowboy and Bird Brain I mentioned, what we do is I go to his house. When we haven't thought up the idea, I go to his house. His, his entire wall, he's painted it in a blackboard paint. So I'll we'll talk about ideas and he'll draw and he'll write all the notes up on the blackboard. So we plan it out like a mind map on the blackboard, which is really cool. I have another friend called George, George Ivanoff. He's done these books called You Choose, which are like choose your own adventure. And he has yellow post-it notes everywhere, all over his wall when he's doing those. So we all do it a little bit differently, but generally when I write a story, I just get the idea and I just write it. I don't really plan. I plan it out a little bit in my head, but I like to just write it and see what happens and see where it goes. So yeah, it's a bit bit different, but all authors are different. Some plan it really, really strictly. Others don't plan it much. Okay, Mrs. Waterbury, one more from you. Okay, the last one. Um, oh, Isabella wants to know, how old were you when you started writing? Oh, good question, Isabella. I used to write stories in primary school. So I used to always write, I'd go home and write stories and I'd write stories at school. So I used to write in primary school and I still have some books that I've written when I was in school. But then after I finished high school, I became an engineer and I didn't write for ages. So then when I started writing, when I was saying it was 20 years since I've been writing, that I was, this is going to show you how, you'll guess how old I am. That was, I was 20 nine years old when I started writing and that was 20 years ago so now you can guess how old I am oh have you guessed someone I think someone in Miss Waterloo's class has guessed how old I am they put their hand up I'm not 102 <laughs> so yes yeah, so I was 20 28 or 29 around there same age as I am, Adam. So cyber high five. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friends. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam, for dialing in from Australia, sharing with us all of the great ideas and drawings. My, my penguin doesn't look as, as spiffy as yours, but it, it looks a, good. It was a valiant effort. We'll call it that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have a lovely day, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye.